So this is the last question before we open it up to our great um, audience questions. Uh, the Wiser Diplomacy Center that you're helping to launch is really committed to training the next generation of international affairs leaders and experts in the United States. If you look out at the next 20, 25 years of challenges that they're going to all be facing, what are they? What should they be working on? What should they be thinking about? And, and how should they be best prepared to be the kind of leaders we're going to need for the next 20 and 30 years? Great question, and we'd probably be here till breakfast uh, with all of us <laughs> talking about it, but I think uh, just a few, uh, a few points. Uh, first of all, I love what you're doing uh, at the Ford School and the Weiser Center and everything that is being supported, uh, what the Wiles have done, all of you who've seen the importance of this kind of investment in our next generation of leaders. And the conversation we had over at the school, which was just with the students, was very uh, revealing uh, based on the questions they asked because it wasn't just how do I get prepared, you know, what do I study, where do I work, what do I do? What are the values that should guide me as I think about becoming a leader who wants to make a positive difference? And one of the questions was, what is the role of empathy? And I am a huge believer that if you are a leader who wants to make a positive difference rather than just you know, feather your nest or stroke your ego, but you want to make a positive difference in people's lives, empathy is key. You can't really, you know, you can't really help people unless you can relate to them. I, you know, when I went to Bangladesh and, and to India and met women who had gotten these loans, that's what got me committed. You can read about it, you can go to a lecture about it, but you see the difference that it makes in their lives. So from my perspective, we've got to get back to listening to each other, empathizing with each other, working with each other. We cannot solve our problems here at home or around the world if we continue to be so divisive, so divided, uh, and so mean to each other. Mm. And, you know, whatever we can do to try to break out of that, that doesn't mean we're going to all agree. I mean, part of being in a democracy is you have disagreements and you have the right to disagree. But we've got to start showing that democracy can work again. We need to have debates that actually lead to decisions being made and actions being taken. And we can't afford paralysis and gridlock. We can't constantly be looking for the political advantage. We need to say, hey, what does America need and what does America need to do in the world? So if you look out at all the problems we have, none of them can be solved by us alone. But if we don't lead, I can guarantee you they won't be solved. Mm. If we're not in the forefront of trying to figure out what we do about climate change, what we do about conflict, what we do about the spread of disease, which is only going to get worse because of the climate change, disease is moving north, and we are not prepared uh, for that. Uh, how do we try to help manage the rise of China? They have every right to rise, but not at the expense of their neighbors, not at the expense of concentration camps filled with Uyghurs, not at the expense of you know, suppressing the, the rights, freedom, and dignity of their own people. How do we work with that? How do we deal with uh, an, a newly aggressive Russia? How do we deal with Iran uh, that feels like the constraints that were put on it by the Iran agreement are gone, so they basically can pursue that nuclear weapon that we put a lid on under uh, the Iranian agreement and the Obama administration? So, yeah, we have a lot of big, big issues, and we need leaders who are going to put country before party, country before personal interest, I'm not saying it's easy. I plead guilty to the times I didn't. Uh, you know, it's very, uh, very easy to kind of get into the frame of mind like you're right and everybody's wrong. But we've got to save ourselves from that. And it's the next generation of leaders who are going to have to model the best way to do that. That's great.